multiple loop nests. And the same basic rate balancing procedure also helps us to determine the unrolling factors that we need in order to hit the throughput target. So if you've computed all of the uh, Q factors for all of your uh, levels of all loop nests, the unrolling factor in the innermost loop that you need in order to reach the throughput target at the edge of the accelerator is just the ceiling of the throughput target divided by uh, the Q factor. So for example, if the innermost loop nest of stage F has a Q of 16, meaning it's very underutilized, its II is gonna be 16 in the final design, uh, and the throughput target is two, then it doesn't need to be unrolled at all because if you're only utilized 1 16th of the time at one pixel per cycle and you're gonna increase to two pixels per cycle, you're only gonna be used 1 8th of the time. So the unrolling factor is one or no unrolling. On the other hand, if the Q factor is 16 and the throughput target is 32, then you're gonna have to unroll by two because you don't have enough capacity and you'll be at 200% uh, utilization at, two pixels per at 32 pixels per clock cycle. So with that said, um, the other important point is that this scheduling algorithm, this simplification is much more scalable than a widely used polyhedral scheduler. So we, just to compare the runtimes, we took several different applications with three, seven, 15, 31, 97, 115, and 409 statements. So an increasing number of statements over a pretty wide range. And we compared the runtime of the clockwork algorithm to the runtime of ISL, which is a, uh, classic polyhedral uh, scheduling and polyhedral analysis tool with an algorithm, with a scheduling algorithm that's kind of a um, uh, descendant of the Pluto algorithm, if you're familiar with that. And we set a timeout of 20 minutes and measured the runtimes of clockwork and of ISL. And by the way, um, this citation is from 2010, but ISL is constantly being improved. It's an open source library that people are adding to all the time. So it's actually very current. And what you see is that actually at three statements, ISL is a little bit faster than clockwork, but they're both, um, they take a negligible amount of time. And then at seven statements, it's the same story. Uh, ISL is a little bit uh, faster, but uh, you know, both of them take an extremely small amount of time. By the time you get to 15 statements, ISL takes nearly a second and clockwork, uh, you know, takes a little more than a 20th of a second. At 31 statements, <coughs> uh, clockwork's about a hundred times faster than ISL. At 97, it's getting uh, you know, even higher than 100, somewhere between 100 and 1,000 times faster. And at 115, um, the clockwork runtime is still under a second, and ISL uh, times out after 20 minutes. So um, this is a much more schedule scalable scheduling algorithm than the default off-the-shelf polyhedral algorithm. So it's a scalable algorithm that makes sense in this domain, but are the accelerators it produces actually any good? So we're going to split this comparison into two pieces. In the first part, we're going to compare against um, a state-of-the-art system for uni-rate pipelines, and then we're going to talk about performance on multi-rate pipelines. So for the comparison with uni-rate pipelines, or stencil-only pipelines, pipelines with no upsampling or downsampling, we're going to compare to a system called SODA, which stands for Stencil with Optimized Data Flow Architecture, and it generates hardware stencil pipelines. These pipelines have theoretically optimally sized reuse buffers, and the design makes extensive use of ready-valid channels for communication. And it was a candidate for a best paper award at ICCAD 2018. So it's not a straw man. It's, um, you know, it's a serious system that was recently published for this kind of uh, task. And as our comparison applications, unfortunately, there aren't a lot of large uni-rate image processing applications. The vast majority of image processing applications that have many dozens or hundreds of stages actually include pyramids, which include upsampling or downsampling. So for comparisons, we're going to have some modest size apps. We're going to have a blur, which is an X blur and then a Y blur that takes two stages. You can read stage as loop nest or statement in this case. Uh, Sobel, which has four stages. Camera pipeline, which is a simplified camera pipeline with 10 stages. And Jacobi iteration, uh, which has got 15 stages. And all of these use 16-bit uh, integer math. And for the experimental setup, we're going to target the Xilinx Vertex 7 VU9P, which is a big FPGA with about a million LUTs at a clock target of 250 megahertz. So Clockwork uses on average 55% fewer LUTs, 30% fewer flip-flops, and 22% fewer BRAMs than SODA on these benchmarks. So you know, the way these tables are set up, um, each column is, of the four columns is an application. So this is the blur column. And then within each column for an app, we have three groups uh, for the different throughputs that they were run at. So this is blur at one pixel per cycle, blur at 16 pixels per cycle, and blur at 32 pixels per cycle. And the uh, blue bar is soda and the green bar is clockwork. And uh, what you can see also on the, uh, you know, the rows is that each row is a resource. So this bottom row is flip-flops, this middle row is BRAMs, and the top row is lookup tables. And so, uh, well, what you see here is that 
Clockworks resource utilization overall was better, and as throughputs go up, the utilization gets better and better and better. Or relative to soda, it gets better and better. So the next thing to talk about, which I'm going to talk about in the next video, is multi-rate applications. And so we wanted to test a wider range of application sizes. So the three multi-rate applications we used were max pooling, which is a neural network operation that has one stage, Gaussian pyramid, which is a, a way of building a representation of an image by successively blurring and downsampling it, and then synthetic exposure fusion, which is a 53-stage image processing application that um, was used, for example, in the uh, high dynamic range Android camera pipeline that was published in uh, the Transactions on Graphics in 2016. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about um, competitor systems for these applications and how Clockworks performance looks on these kinds of larger, more significant, and realistic multi-rate applications. So I'll see you in the next video.